Lucy Show. Starring Lucille Ball. Co-starring Vivian Vance. this beauty mask before it gets hard. Oh, yeah. Chris is always monopolizing the bathroom. What takes her so long in there? Oh, you know how teenagers are. If they're not washing their hair, they're rolling it up or taking it down or trying out a new style. Yeah. Or brushing it or spraying it or washing out the spray. Yeah. Or rolling it up again. You think she'd come out of there once in a while just to give her roots a rest? <laughs> well, one good thing, while she's in the bathroom, at least she's not tying up the phone. Oh, can you imagine what would happen if we had a telephone in there? Good heavens. I wouldn't see Chris until she was old enough to vote. <laughs> Chris! Oh. I better get out in the kitchen and wash this off. Yeah. Chris, are you ever coming out of there? Well, what are you two doing? Is that you, Aunt Lucy? Yes, it's me, Aunt Lucy. This is a facial mask I'm wearing to make me look pretty. Gee, Mom, I thought you looked prettier without it. <laughs> well, thank you, honey. <laughs> What, what's come over you two, washing in the middle of the day? We're going to the Y. So? They frown on filth. <laughs> well, I see somebody beat you to the annex. Yeah, I'm afraid so. <laughs> Lucy, do you think it'd do any good if I called Chris's boyfriend and had him call her, and while they're talking on the telephone, I could rush into the bathroom and stake out a claim in the name of the great unwashed? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. Mom, we're going to the Y to play basketball. Okay, darling. Okay, Jerry, here you are. Now, remember, be sure and take a shower before you come home. Do we have to? Yes, you have to. Bye. We, too, frown on filth. Bye. Bye. Take a shower for me. <laughs> you know, Viv, one bathroom is just not enough for five people. Of course it isn't. It never has been. I'm just going to have to install a second bathroom. Oh, now, Lucy, we've been over all of that before. You just can't afford it. Well, there's just one thing that we're going to have to do. You and the boys and I are going to have to come out every morning, jump in the car, put the top down, ride into Danfield, and go through the car wash. <laughs> <laughs> That's a thought. Hey, you know, I could just put in a shower instead of a whole bathroom. That way it wouldn't cost so much. Yeah, but Paisley the plumber would still charge you plenty for the labor. Well, I'm going to call him. Maybe he's having a sale. Maybe so. <laughs> you know, we wouldn't even have to tear down a wall. We could put the shower in that closet in the boys' room. Hey, you better wash off that facial mask. Why? Because in just a few minutes, you're going to be ready for Mount Rushmore. <laughs> okay. Now, don't use all the hot water. Oh, much to install a shower? Mr. Paisley, if you don't lower your prices, you're liable to bring on socialized plumbing. <laughs> well, good day to you too, Mr. Paisley. What'd he say? Just what you said he would say. Boy, these prices. Apparently, the only way to get clean is to be filthy rich. <laughs> hey, you know, if I bought the equipment, and had a friend install the shower wouldn't cost half as much. If the friend you have in mind is who I think it is, that friend thinks you're out of your mind. Viv, I wouldn't ask you to do a thing like that. Thanks. 
You don't know anything about plumbing. <laughs> Who did you have in mind? Good old Harry next door. Oh, now, Lucy, we can't ask Harry to do anything else for us. We're always imposing on him. That's not imposing. Harry enjoys doing things for us. It feeds his ego. <laughs> it seems to me that by now his ego would be as fat as a horse. <laughs> well, where are you going? Over to Harry's. The sooner he starts on the shower, the sooner we'll have it. Oh, Harry, hi. I'm sorry. It's all right. You just dented my bumper a little. <laughs> where are you going in such a rush? I was going over to see you. Forget it. I'm not there. Ah, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> You're funny, Harry. <laughs> what did you want to see me about? Oh, well, what'd you come over here for? To invite your lovely girls to lunch. Oh, great. Come on, Lucy, let's get dressed. No, we can't go. Why not? Well, don't you remember, Viv? I was going over to Harry's. Don't you remember? I was going to invite him over here for lunch. You were? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, she was. She was. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> now, you just sit down, Harry. Relax. Get nice and comfy. And I'm going to make you your favorite dish, Eggs Benedict. Hold it. All right, Lucy, what do you want me to do? <laughs> Whatever do you mean? I have learned from bitter experience that any time you offer me anything more than a peanut butter sandwich, you have something you either want repaired, shoveled, lifted, or taken out of a trap and buried. <laughs> well, that just shows you how wrong you can be, Harry. Oh, Harry, you have such a suspicious nature. You mean you just want me to have lunch? I don't have to do anything? Not a thing. Oh, well, thanks. Unless, of course, you'd like to show your appreciation by installing an extra shower for me. Uh -huh. <laughs> I knew it. Install a shower. That's a big job. Well, Harry, I don't mean for you to do it now while I'm fixing your lunch. I mean, do it next weekend. Couldn't I just have a peanut butter sandwich? <laughs> Harry, it's a snack. Come on, Lucy, I'm no plumbing expert. Oh, you're so modest. You know, you're a whiz at fixing stopped up sinks. Well, that's a lot different than installing a whole shower. I can't do that by myself. Oh, well, you'll have help. Yeah, who? Well, um, come in. Uh, Hi, Tootsie. Hi, Eddie. Eddie. Hi, Lucy. Hey, we were just talking about you. <laughs> you were? Yeah. How would you like some eggs, Benedict? Yeah. How would you like some eggs, Benedict? Oh, that'd be wonderful. Just marvelous. <laughs> I'm coming, I'm coming. Hi, Harry. Hi, Ed. <laughs> Want to meet Joe Melvin. This is Harry Connors. How are you? Hello, nice Joe. Nice to see you. Boy, am I glad to see you. I just discovered I don't know a snake from a plumber's friend. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hey, where are the girls? They're out shopping. Why? My boy, how would you like to get out of this whole ugly mess? <laughs> Great, but how? I've got a plan. You see, Joe here is a plumber from Ridgebury. Buddy! <laughs> uh, now, would you be willing to put out a little money to get out of installing that shower? Is it under a million dollars? <laughs> I'll give you my rock bottom price. You got a deal. All right, my boy, I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna tell the girls that uh, Joe here is an old friend of ours who'll do the job for nothing. Then we split the bill, take the weekend off, and the girls don't know the difference. Is that good? Good, it's inspired. <laughs> <laughs> do you mind if I ask a question? Uh, no, go ahead. Why don't you just tell the two ladies the truth? Because they'd never go for it. Now. They don't mind us giving up our weekends or breaking our back, but they never allow us to pay you. After all, they've got their pride. Oh. Well, look, I better get to work. You guys started paying me the minute I walked through that door. <laughs> I'll show you where the shower goes. Yeah. It's in the closet in the boys' room. Now, Harry, remember, uh, we tell the girls that we meant to do the job with Joe, but suddenly you have to take a flight to Honolulu, yeah. <laughs> and I've got a client in town from L.A. <laughs> and then we stay out of their way for the entire weekend. You got it? Oh, oh. I gotta hand it to you, Eddie. 
I always knew you were clever, but you turned out to be positively crafty. <laughs> well, how's it going, Joe? Well, it ought to be finished in an hour or two. Good. Gee, you must be a good friend of Eddie and Harry's to let them take advantage of you like this. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Do you know how much a real plumber would charge for this? How much? Oh, I'd hate to tell you. You know what robbers they all are. <laughs> now, just a minute. Some of my best friends are plumbers. Oh, well, of course, there are good ones and bad ones. Yeah. What do you do for a living, Joe? Well, I'm... <laughs> well, what do you think I do? Well, from the looks of your sensitive hands, I'd say you were a doctor. <laughs> you guessed it. I can always tell. Yeah. <laughs> Ma, can we watch Joe? Well, you can if you don't bother the man. We won't. All right, sit down there and be quiet now. He's very, very busy, so be quiet. Well, there it is, Jerry. A shower right in our room. We won't have any excuse for not washing again. That's one of the most depressing sights I have ever seen. <laughs> hey, Joe, where's the bathtub? Well, this is a stall shower. There's no tub. This is different from our other shower. Then I can get out of using this one on a technicality. How come? There's no place to sell my bow. <laughs> Joe, where does the water go up? Oh, right there. How come it's covered up? Well, you see, this is a test plug. It has to stay screwed on over the drain until the inspector okays it. Oh. What's an inspector? Now, now, now. I told you not to bother the man. Come on, downstairs. Why don't you go out and play or something? <laughs> well, how's it going, Joe? <laughs> well, it would go a lot faster if you wouldn't keep coming in here every few minutes asking, how's it going, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I suppose so. Joe. Isn't that shower head a little low? It's the standard height. Well, it looks a little low to my eye. I think it should be about five inches higher. Look, it's too late to do anything about it now. It's already in. Yeah, and the way it's in, Joe, that's a pretty sloppy caulking job. I'm not finished with it yet. Well, I suppose I shouldn't complain. After all, you are an amateur. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nothing personal, Joe. Say, mm. should you be using that wrench on that? <laughs> Just what do you suggest I use? Well, I think you should use that doohickey right there. You're liable to mar that hardware with that wrench. How would you like to do this yourself? Well, now, let's not get huffy. I'm not getting huffy. Well, now, for a doctor, you have very nasty bedside manners. <laughs> what would you say if I told you I was a plumber. <laughs> well, if you are, you could fool the panel on what's my line. <laughs> well, it just so happens I am a plumber. You are not. You're a doctor friend of Eddie's and Harry. I never saw them before in my life. And the only operation I ever performed was removing a spoon from a garbage disposal. <laughs> well, if you're not a friend, why are you doing this? Because they're paying me. They're paying you. Where are you going? I'm quitting. If they're paying you, you can't quit. Lady, there isn't enough money in the world to get me to finish this job. Here. Wait a minute. What do you want me to do with this? Finish it yourself with a doohickey. <laughs> <laughs> What's he mumbling about? He just walked out on the job. Well, that's a fine thing for a friend of Eddie and Harry's to do. Friend? He isn't even a doctor. <laughs> Who isn't even a friend or a doctor? I'll bet he isn't even a plumber. <laughs> Who isn't even a friend or a doctor or a plumber? Oh, wait till I get my hands on those two sneaks. What two sneaks? 
Lucy, will you please tell me what you're talking about? I'll tell you later, while we're finishing the shower. <laughs> Wait a minute. What do you mean, while we are finishing the shower? Oh, well, it won't be hard. It, well, there's nothing much to do but hang the door and put in the faucet handles. He was almost finished. Who was almost finished? The friend, the doctor, the plumber, or one of the two sneaks? <laughs> Go get on your working clothes and I'll tell you. Now, Lucy, I've helped you do a lot of things, but I draw the line at plumbing. Now, Viv, do you want to hear the story about the friend, the doctor, the plumber, and the two sneaks, or don't you? <laughs> Oh, the things I do to bring a little drama into my life. Get <laughs> and hurry back. There. Now, that wasn't bad, was it? No, as a matter of fact, that was pretty simple. You know, I don't know why those two sneaks didn't do this themselves instead of throwing all that money away on that plumber. Well, I don't know why they didn't do it either, but I don't know why you're so mad at them for being willing to pay for it. We're willing to have them do it for free. Well, that's different. One's charity and one's friendship. <laughs> Besides, do you realize if they hadn't spent all that money on Joe, they could have spent it on us? <laughs> You're right. They are a couple of sneaks. <laughs> hey, you get out and turn on the water main. We'll see how this works, huh? Yes, sir. Wait a minute. You better take this. I think it's going to be a little hard to turn. Whoa, okay. <laughs> Hurry up now.
clumsy and, and, and done something to that water main. Well, I wouldn't have broken the water main if you hadn't been too cheap to hire a plumber to come in here and finish this shower. All right, all right. Oh, no, Sissy lady, we got to get some help. Where? Well, maybe somebody will come by the house and save us. <laughs> Who, some door-to-door frog man? <laughs> shower, I may never wash again. I'm going to have to learn to lick my paws like a cat. What plumber did you get, Paisley? No, Joe. Joe! How did you ever get him to come back after all he said? It took all my diplomacy, all my tact, and all my spending money for the next six months. I'd feel sorry for you if I weren't so waterlogged. I guess I shouldn't complain. You know, all that water could have seeped through the plaster and I would really have had some expense. So actually, I came out ahead. Lucy, I want to tell you something. This is absolutely the last time I slip into my coveralls to be an apprentice on one of your dreadful little projects. <laughs> oh, now these are things we're going to look back on and laugh at one day when we're old and gray. And from the way things are going, that may be next week. <laughs> Oh, I'll bet we're going to have to plaster the whole ceiling. Wait! Oh. Lucy, absolutely not. No. Now, Viv, listen. 
You have never learned how to plaster, and it's all you need to round you out, and you'll be a perfect Mrs. Fixit. <laughs> stale quartet. I'm not even in it. You're not? How no. come? They had the nerve to tell me that I don't know how to sing. Oh, I think you have a lovely voice. Well, thank you, dear, but apparently I have a voice only a daughter can love. But you sound great in the shower. Well, I mentioned that, but they said when the water's not running, my voice leaves a lot to be desired. Well, I'll bet you sing as good as the rest of them. Well, actually, they've had a lot more experience, you know. Dorothy and Grace sing in the church choir, and Thelma Green says she once appeared in the third road company of Rio Rita. And, of course, Aunt Viv sang with a band in college. Did Aunt Viv really sing with a band? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Viv keeps telling me she could have been another wee Bonnie Baker. <laughs> Who is wee Bonnie Baker? Oh, she was a big singing star. She made her, her biggest hit when she sang, Oh, Johnny, oh, Johnny, how you can love. Oh, Johnny, oh, Johnny, heaven's above. <laughs> that was a big hit. Yeah, that was a big hit. Hi. Well, you, uh, you'll understand when you try to explain to your daughter what was so hot about Elvis Presley singing, You ain't nothing but a hound dog. You ain't nothing but a hound dog. <laughs> Are you disappointed that you're not in the quartet? Oh, heavens no. I couldn't care less. Well, bye, Mom. Bye-bye, honey. Don't be too late now. No, I won't. 
Quartet. Why? Oh, her husband's company is transferring him to California, and he has to leave right away. And she has the nerve to want to go along with her husband and four children. <laughs> <laughs> Leaving our quartet high and dry. I never knew a soprano you could trust. <laughs> well, who can we get to take her place? Yes, who? Hi, girls. Hi, Hi. Lucy. Hi. Well, I know you have a lot of rehearsing to do, so I'll leave you alone. Oh, now, let's see. There must be someone we can get to take Grace's place in our quartet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but who? They don't have barbershop trios, do they? Oh, no. And even if they did, we all sing harmony. We need somebody to take melody. Yes, we need somebody that'll sing melody. <laughs> Lucy, we're trying to think of a singer to take Grace's part. <laughs> so would you please stop all that noise, dear? <laughs> Let's see, what other women are in our volunteer fire department? Um, what about Pauline Lopez? Oh, no, she could never get away with those seven kids. <laughs> That's right. Even before she comes to a fire, she has to find a babysitter. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, what about Barbara Cushing? She's the soloist in our choir. She has a beautiful voice. But she's not a member of the volunteer fire department. Oh, that's right. Good try. Keep thinking. Where's the fire? <laughs> oh, there isn't any fire, but I know who you can get to replace Grace. Who? Ah, uh, well, it, it, it's someone who uh, who isn't moving to California, and someone who sings melody, and someone who doesn't have any babysitter problem, and someone who is a member of the Women's Volunteer Fire Department. Who is it? Give us her name. Down by the old mill stream. Her name. Her name. <laughs> If you three are so dense, I don't know if I want to be in your darned old quartet. You? 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 Yes, me, me, me. <laughs> oh, I don't know, Lucy. <laughs> what do you think, girls? Well, I... Should... Well, now, her voice isn't too bad. It isn't good, but it's not bad. <laughs> well, if we don't take her, we won't be able to go to Albany. Well, it... Well, there isn't anybody else. She's better than nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Lucy, you're in. Oh, thank you, thank you. Hey, we better start rehearsing. Yeah, girls, we gotta get rehearsing right now if we're going up to Albany and get a hold of that little old cup. Now, line up right over here. Line up according to size because that makes the sound a lot better. Lucy. Lucy. <laughs> well, um, why did you decide to sing? Well, actually, we hadn't come to any decision yet. I still think we should sing Moonlight Bay. Oh, by the light of the silvery moon had such good harmony. Yeah, but Red Revved Robin, is that that, yes. you know, that hey, red... Hey, I know, I know, Be no. My Bumblebee. That's a wonderful old number, has a great arrangement for quartets. And it's not, you're not one of those things like Red Red Robin, you know, everybody and his brother sings. It's Lucy! Well, now, it's really up to you three to decide. <laughs> Let's try by the light of the silvery moon. Okay, okay, by the light of the silvery moon. Oh, righty, here's your note, Dorothy. Ready? Bye. You were? Yes. Well, I couldn't hear you. No, I couldn't I be either. singing. 
Okay, let's try it again. Now sing out. All right. Let's go. By the light of the silvery moon, I want to spoon to my honey. Now, don't tell me you couldn't hear me that time either. You sing too soft. I do not. You three sing too loud. <laughs> well, I was singing as loud as I could. It's not how loud you sing. It's how much you project. Project? <laughs> yes, you gotta throw out your voice. Well, let's not get nasty. <laughs> oh, listen, girls, let's just forget the whole thing. Let's forget the whole thing. Oh, no, no, wait a minute. Why don't you sing my number? You'll be able to hear me on my number. Be my bumblebee. I got it right here. Look, Viv, you play that. You sing right there. I sing right here. Here, give me my first note. Okay. You'll be able to hear me on this one. It's a very good yeah, arrangement. Come on. B, 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 la, la, la. couldn't hear me that time. Oh, don't you bet your sweet life we could hear you that time. Don't you think those parts are a little unevenly divided? <laughs> you gotta admit you could hear me. Oh, we could hear you yeah. all right. Well, I don't know about you two, but I'm certainly not going clear up to Albany just to be a buzzer. <laughs> that number doesn't need a quartet. All it needs is a soprano and a hive. <laughs> We should forget the whole thing. Let's just forget the forget whole it. thing. Forget it. You want me to Wait a minute, to Thelma. Here? Thelma, what did you say about projecting? We said you didn't do it. <laughs> well, would it help if I learned how? Well, sure it would help, but how could you? Hey, my vocal coach is here in town. I bet he could teach her how to sing properly and to project. Sure he could. Well, now, it may be worth a try. Sure, it's worth a try. It's our only chance. Yeah, it's your only chance. I'll call Dr. Get him on the first thing in the morning. No, 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 call him right now. But it's so late. Well, well, that's just it. We haven't got a moment to lose. You know how bad I am. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Dr. Gitterman, how do you do? I'm Lucy Carmichael. Yes, Thelma tells me we've got a little problem. By next week, she wants me to get some power into that little tiny voice of yours. <laughs> oh, well, I don't know that I have such a little tiny voice. Oh, would you mind giving me a sample? Uh, down by the old mill stream. We haven't a moment to lose. <laughs> Now, the first thing I teach my pupils is correct posture. Well, but, Dr. Gettemann, wouldn't you like to take off your coat? We haven't got that much time. Oh, <laughs> we have time to take off your coat. The first thing I teach my pupils is correct posture. Yes, now, let sir. me see you stand, please. Yes, sir. Is that your posture? <laughs> well, it sure looks like mine. <laughs> well, now, if you want to be a singer, you're going to have to learn to stand up straight. <laughs> Quite so stiff. You've got to learn. You've got to learn to relax. Yeah, oh. do as I do. Yeah. <clears throat> now, completely relax your entire body. <laughs> imagine yourself. Imagine yourself a marionette. You have absolutely no control over your actions. Someone is pulling the strings, and you must do exactly as he says. Mrs. Carmichael, what are you doing? I think there's a new man on the string. <laughs> well, now that we've got you relaxed, let's get back to your posture. Now, now stand straight, but remain relaxed. Yes, sir. <clears throat> now, that, that is the correct posture for yes, a singer. Sir. Yes, sir. Now, the next thing we want to discuss is breathing. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, the breath is most important. 
The breath, after all, is that power that operates the vocal cords. Where do you breathe? Oh, anywhere I happen to be, it's a <laughs> <coughs> yes, well, The correct placement of the breath on the vocal cords is very important. You see, it's that that produces the, the proper the tonal quality. Yes, sir. Mm. Well, now, sit down over here and relax, please. The breath hitting the vocal cords at exactly the right spot that nature intended will give you a sound like this. <laughs> you scared me. Well, that's merely a sound I'd like you to imitate. That is very good. You shall promise. Thank you. Yes, now, I want you to chew your tongue and hum. <laughs> Chew my tongue and hum. <laughs> that loosens the vocal cord. Now, at the same time, same time, I want you to think of your voice as an umbrella that closes and opens like this. Now, continue to chew your tongue and hum. <laughs> 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 Open. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try the vowels now. The vowels? The vowels. Ah, A, O, U. With me, please. Ah, A, A, O, U. Ah, A, O, U. Ah, A, O, U. Ah, A, O, U. Try another one. Ooga! Ooga! With me. Ooga! 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 Ah! Ooga! 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 You're not doing it right at all, Mrs. Carmichael. You're not using your glasses. I didn't even know I had one. <laughs> I'm sorry. Perhaps I've been going along a little too rapidly yes, for you. Sure am. Let, let's, let's try something else now, all shall right. we? All right. Now, to breathe correctly, you must you must use the the suction power of your lung. Yes, sir. Now, I will tell you what I want you to do. I want you to take a deep breath and hold it. Now, take a very deep breath. Yes, sir. Mm, hold it. Deep. Deep breath and hold it. Oh. Hi. Oh, hi, Dr. Gitterman. Oh, hello, Selma. Oh, how are you? Fine, thanks. Yes. I'd like to meet the other members. I think we can show a little progress. Okay. <laughs> What's the matter with her? Huh? Oh, I forgot, Mrs. Carmichael. Let's <laughs> Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I, I forgot about you. <laughs> and I must say, I'm amazed at how long you were able to hold your breath. You must have very powerful lungs. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will do that. <laughs> and let's show our friends what we've done, huh? <laughs> Ah, ah, ah. Remember everything I've taught you. The posture. Yes, now the relax. Yes, remember the remember the proper breathing. And chew your tongue and hum. Mm -hmm. And the umbrella. Mm -hmm. oh, the tonal quality. Mm -hmm. Now hit this. Mm-hmm.
ogre. Careful now, don't strain that ogre. <laughs> Are you nervous, Lucy? No, why should I be? Well, it's the first time you've ever sung in public. Well, I gotta start someplace. Mm, who's that? Come in. Hi. 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 Hurry up, we've got to be at the auditorium in 10 minutes. Okay. I understand there are going to be 3,000 people in the audience. 3,000 yeah. people? Oh. Oh, Dorothy. Oh, I'm so nervous my knees are knocking together. I've got butterflies in my stomach. I've got butterflies and their knees are knocking together. <laughs> How are you feeling? <laughs> Lucy, are you all right? I'll be all right right after I faint. <laughs> You're not going to faint. That's right, I'm not gonna faint. Good girl, I'm gonna be sick. <laughs> oh, no, you're not. We've got to get to that auditorium and get dressed. Oh, 3,000 people? Oh, don't let that bother you. Think of them as just one person. Just one person with 6,000 eyes. <laughs> got a little stage fright. Yeah, I just got a little stage fright. It's normal to feel nervous. Yeah, it's normal to feel nervous. Well, you'll be fine once you step out on that stage and start singing our song. What song? <laughs> the song we're going to sing in the contest in about 10 minutes. What contest? <laughs> She's drawn a blank. Lucy, you know the song we've been rehearsing, By the Light of the Silvery Moon. By the what? <laughs> oh, by the Light of the Silvery Moon. By the Light of the Silvery Moon. Ooh, that's a catchy little two. What is it? <laughs> Lucy, come on now. You know how badly you wanted to join our quartet, remember? Now, you know that, don't you? No. You remember Dr. Gitterman? No. Dr. Gitterman, the voice teacher that was going to teach you to sing so you could sing in the contest. Dr. Gitterman. Mm. Gitterman, the voice teacher. That's it, the one that taught you that. That's the one, Dr. Gitterman. You're going to sing by the light of the silver moon in the contest. That, oh, that's it now. By the light of the silver moon. Oh, she's got a moon on the air. Oh, she's got a Women's Volunteer Fire Department, the Four Alarms. Place, park, scene, dark. Silvery moon is shining through the trees. Cast to me, you. Sound of kisses floating on the breeze. Act one, be gun. Dialogue, where would you like to spoon? My clue with you. Underneath the silvery moon. By the light, by the light, by the light of the silvery moon, silvery moon, silvery moon, I want to spoon, want to spoon, want to spoon, to my honey I'll croon, love to honeymoon, 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 keep a shining in June, keep a shining in June, your silvery have just handed me their decision, and the winners are from Danfield, the four alarms. Oh, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I know
know that you all join me in wishing the four alarms all the luck in the world when they appear in the national finals in New York City, which will be televised from coast to coast and seen by the entire nation. <laughs> If this gets me a man, I want one that's still breathing. <laughs> and here's the stole I promised to lend you. Oh, it's lovely. Why, it's genuine mink. This must have cost a fortune. How could you afford this? Oh, well, I didn't buy it alone. Six of us chipped in, and we each get to use it one day a week. <laughs> oh. What does it do on the seventh day, rest? <laughs> yes, and boy, does it need it. Well, I'm certainly lucky that your day is Saturday. Oh, no, my day is Tuesday. I switched with Mildred. Oh, Mildred's day is Saturday. No, her day is Wednesday. <laughs> but Mildred switched with Roselle, whose day is Thursday. And Roselle switched with Irving. <laughs> Irving? Irving's a bachelor. He uses it for date bait. <laughs> oh, baby, if you could only talk. <laughs> you're sure you're going to be able to get this for me for Saturday? Oh, sure, but I have to get it over to Ella for tomorrow. But Ella has a date with Irving, so that saves us a day. <laughs> but don't worry, honey. You'll get it by Saturday night. Oh, well, okay. I, I really want to thank you, Mary Jane. And I guess I should also thank Mildred and Roselle and Ella and Irving. <laughs> I feel like I just won an Academy Award. <laughs> well, if they give an award at that affair for the most beautiful girl, you'll win it. Oh, I don't know about that. But I do want to look nice because it's going to be a lot of very eligible bachelors oh, there, yeah, you know. Oh, really? Yeah. What's, what's the banquet for, Lucy? Well, it's the 50th anniversary of the founding of the bank. And the guest of honor will be the president of the entire organization, Mr. Cornelius Hetherington, Jr. Oh, the name even sounds rich. Oh, he is. He's worth millions. He has two yachts. He has homes all over the world. New York, Paris, Hawaii. Well, is he married? No. That's what I call an eligible bachelor. <laughs> well, he's also 80 years old. <laughs> Well, 
Well, I could use another man in my life, but I'd prefer a little more life in my man. <laughs> I'm gonna get this off. I don't want to get it wrinkled. Yeah, well, I have to rush this over to Edith. Edith? Who's Edith? Oh, well, she's the sixth owner, and she's got a heavy date tonight. You know something? I envy that mink. It's dead, and it goes out more than I do. <laughs> Now, you'd better remind the musicians that we expect them to be there at 7.30. The dinner starts promptly at 8. Yes, sir. Uh, oh, be sure and check with the florist, too. Yes, sir. Now, I want you to follow through on every single detail. This is a very important affair. I don't want anything to go wrong. Now, don't you worry. Just leave everything to me. <laughs> That's what worries me. <laughs> Nothing will go wrong, Mr. Mooney. Well, I certainly hope not. You know, I'm so excited about this banquet. I spent two weeks' salary on a new gown. Mrs. Mooney spent three weeks' salary on a new gown. I didn't know she worked. My salary. <laughs> So she bought herself one of these new evening gowns with a mini skirt. Oh, how does she look? Grotesque. <laughs> Well, Mr. Mooney, you can't blame her for wanting to wear the latest style. True, true, but mini skirts are not for her. No. No, no, she's much too bow-legged. <laughs> if they ever straightened her legs out, she'd be seven feet tall. Well, uh, is there anything else that you want me to take care of, sir? Uh, no, I, I think that covers everything. Oh, by the way, uh, while you were out, the manager of the banquet hall called regarding the color scheme of the decoration. Oh, yes? And I told him to do everything in gold and green. Gold and green? Yes, sir. That sounds like a peculiar combination. Not... But very appropriate. You see, I picked gold because it's the bank's golden anniversary, and I picked green because it's every banker's favorite color. <laughs> that is entirely too obvious. Obvious? It, yes, it's almost poor taste. Now, you get in touch with the banquet hall and have those colors changed to pink and purple. <laughs> pink and purple? Yuck! <laughs> pink and purple happen to be my old school colors. Oh. Now, get in touch with them and have those colors oh, changed. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, Mooney? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. uh, yes, sir. Mooney, an emergency has come up, and I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to give up your lunch hour. That's quite all right, sir. Anything to help out, sir? Well, I was scheduled to pick up Mr. Hetherington at the airport. However, a crisis has arisen, and I have called a meeting in my office immediately with all the important vice presidents. I'll be right in, sir. Not yes. you. <laughs> you go to the airport. Oh, and, uh, Mooney, you better bring your secretary along, too. Mr. Hetherington might want to dictate some letters on his way from the airport. Yes, sir. Oh, and, yes. uh, Mooney, there's one thing yes, more. Sir. Yes, sir. I want you to decorate the banquet hall in Mr. Hetherington's favorite school colors, gold and green. <laughs> gold and green? Well, I have already ordered those colors, sir. Really? Well, that was a lucky guess. <laughs> oh, it wasn't a guess, sir. When I'm given an assignment, I check things thoroughly. Nothing gets past me, sir. Well, good thinking, Mooney. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Just one word, you're fired. Flight number 234, now arriving from Honolulu at gate 10. Is that oh, it? The, that's it, that's Mr. Oh, Henry's really? flight. Oh, really? I'm so excited. Yeah. Is my hair combed? Do I look all right? Oh, yes, you How's fine. my lips? Is my lipstick on straight? You look, yes, you'll first. I want to make a good impression on Mr. Hetherington. Look, he's just going to dictate to you, not propose. Well, I, I've never met a millionaire before. I just want to look my best. Well, millionaires, not just like anybody else. You just treat them like normal human beings. Yeah, I know. That's it. That's it. Hello, hello. Mr. Hedrington, Mr. Hedrington.
is that? I'm the... <laughs> Mr. Mooney, I know I'm president of the bank, but a slight bow from the waist would have been sufficient. <laughs> Oh, well, I, I'm sorry, sir, but I tripped. Uh, I'm afraid it was all my fault. And uh, who is this charming young lady? Oh, uh, this is my secretary, Mrs. Carmichael. Oh, how do you do, uh, sir? <laughs> the pleasure is all mine. Thank you. you have excellent taste in secretaries, Mooney. Oh. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I uh, trust you had a pleasant flight, sir. Oh, fine. I chartered the whole plane. The whole plane? Yep, that way I get the three stewardesses all for myself. <laughs> it's the only way to fly. Mooney? Ah! <laughs> Carmichael, what happened? Oh, it's nothing. I'll be all right. Oh, good. Where's Mr. Mooney? Oh, he stepped out for a moment. He ought to be there. Oh, there he is. Oh, uh, Mr. Hetherington at the airport? Oh, yes, sir. Did you get him back to his hotel? Yes, sir, and he's very happy with his accommodations, sir. Well, good. Let us hope that he will be as, as happy with the lady you have selected for him to escort to the banquet tonight. The lady? <laughs> yes. But, uh, but, but uh, you, you didn't say anything about a lady, sir. Well, I didn't think it was necessary. You said that when you were given an assignment, you check things thoroughly. <laughs> and if you had, you would have known that Mr. Hetherington never attends a social function unless he escorts a lady. Uh, well, sir, I didn't think that a man of his age would be interested in the opposite sex. <laughs> Mooney, he is old, not dead. <laughs> now, I expect you to provide a lady for him. Well, that shouldn't be too difficult, sir. I'm quite sure one of our charming female employees would be happy to go with him. Wouldn't you, Mrs. Carmichael? Me? Yes, you. And give me one good reason why not. I don't like it. Oh, that's a good reason. <laughs> Mrs. Carmichael is too young and attractive. That's true. <laughs> We can't have the president of the bank seem like a playboy. Oh, you're quite right, sir. No. We've got to have someone closer to his own age. Someone refined and wealthy and dignified and keeping with his position. Well, I'll do my best, sir. I promise you. I don't want promises. I want results. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, we better do something fast or we're in trouble. Oh, yes, we are. Oh. What do you mean, we? If anything happens to me, your job is none too secure. You know? <laughs> now, do you know a refined, dignified, wealthy old lady? If I did, I'd have her adopt me. <laughs> Mrs. Carmichael, I want help, not jokes. Well, I'd help you if I could. Not my fault, I'm too young. Yes, it is. You are late for everything. You were even born late. If I were an old lady, I'd be very honored to go with Mr. Hetherington. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mooney, what are you thinking? If you're thinking what I think you're thinking, then I don't think I like what you're thinking. All we need is a little gray hair and a makeup job. Oh, Mr. Mooney! Now, you're not going to send me on a date with that Don Juan of the Stone Age. You will make a lovely little old lady. But I can. You I... can and you will. I spent two whole weeks salary on a beautiful new dress. And no, I'm not going to get to wear it. That's not being fair. All right, all right. I'll be fair. I'll give you a choice. All right. Either you'll be an old lady or you'll be an unemployed lady. <laughs> condition for a man of your age. 
What do you mean, a man my age? Why, I'm in better shape than you are. Look at you. You look like a paunchy penguin. <laughs> hey, where's Mooney and my date? Oh, well, they'll be along later, sir. Uh, tell me, what, uh, what kind of a gal is she? Uh, is she pretty? Does she have a good figure? Well, I don't know. I haven't met her. However, if Mr. Mooney selected her, sir, you may rest assured that she is refined, dignified, honest, friendly, wholesome, and trustworthy. <laughs> What's she getting me, a date or a Boy Scout? <laughs> oh, I'm sure you'll like the one that he has to... Oh, here they are. Come in, come in. Mooney, you are late. Oh, the well's right. And you're alone. Oh, no, no, sir. No, no, no. Uh, yeah. Come on. Come on, come on. Uh, she's uh, a little shy, sir. <laughs> This is Abigail Vandermeer. May I present Mr. Harrison Cheever? How do you do? <laughs> Very pleased to meet you. And uh, <coughs> your escort for the evening, Mr. Cornelius Hetherington, Jr. Hello, Jr. <laughs> the pleasure is all mine. Do come in. Sir, it's getting late. Don't you think we had best leave for the banquet? Yeah, let's go. No, 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 Rush. <laughs> no, Rush. The banquet can wait. Uh, first, I think we ought to get better acquainted. Oh, that's a very yeah. good idea. Yeah. I said we, not you. <laughs> yes, we'll see you later, Mooney. You too. Oh, but I... Go on, get, 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 the both oh. of you. Oh. Skedaddle. <laughs> Start without us. <laughs> now that we're alone, we can get on with it. Get on with what? <laughs> what did you have in mind, Junior? <laughs> now we can get to know each other better. Oh, how much better? Uh, first, tell me, uh, is your name Miss Vandermeer or Mrs.? Mrs. Oh. <laughs> I'm a widow. Oh! Uh, tell me, are you rich? Filthy. <laughs> You're yep. the kind of a girl I've been waiting for all my life. That's a long time. <laughs> yes, sir. You know something else? Uh, I think you and I could make beautiful music together. Uh, uh, say, uh, 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 I, I, are you really 80 years old? Heck no, I'm 90. <laughs> well, don't you think you better cool down a little? When well, you're 90, if you cool down, the fire goes out. <laughs> You better cool down, Junior. I'll put your fire out for good. I'm just trying to make conversation. Well, make it from over there. I'm not hard of hearing. You know, you're so beautiful when you get your dander up. You get my dander up any further, and I'll take away your rattle. Say, I, I got an idea. Oh, not another one. Oh, you like this one. <laughs> See, how, how about a little drinky? All righty, how about a little warm milky? <laughs> I was thinking of something stronger than that. Uh, how about some champagne, huh? That's too strong. The bubbles knock me down. <laughs> <laughs> no, the bubbles keep knocking me down. Oh, say, <laughs> that's a dilly. Oh. <laughs> oh. Now, you keep your distance, you understand? Come on, honey. Give me a little kiss. I'm going to give you nothing. Oh, yes, you are. Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, that's not fair. You're younger than I am. You're right. Why don't you act your age? <laughs> Heck, that's no fun. Yeah if you don't stop chasing me, I'm going to punish you. How? Oh. 
I'm gonna let you catch me. Now I got you. You better pucker up, honey. Here I come. You're a frisky little devil. But I like him that way. Yahoo! <laughs> I think you're trying to avoid me. Go and get me, Buster. I'm taking your vitamins. <laughs> to treat the president of a bank. Well, maybe not, but it was the only way to treat a wolf. <laughs> How much of a wolf could he be? He's over 80. That's the worst kind. He's had all those years of experience. <laughs> oh, it couldn't have been that bad. You haven't spent an evening being Yahoo! <laughs> Nevertheless, you had no right to let him go to that banquet alone. Fortunately, he hasn't complained. Yeah, well, I'm complaining. I spent two weeks' salary on a beautiful new dress, and I didn't even get to wear it. Well, that is... Mr. Mooney's office. Yes, Gladys? Mr. Hetherington's on his way in to see Mr. Mooney. Thank you, Gladys. Uh, what did he want? I hope he isn't mad. What would he want to see me for? I don't know. Oh, what I hope there's no trouble. You, you never know what you... Oh! <laughs> Mr. Hetherington's... <I'm... laughs> Why can't you learn to just bow from the waist? <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. Oh, won't you sit down? No, thanks. No, thanks. I just dropped in to say goodbye. Oh, oh, you're leaving. Yep. But I'll be back in a couple of months, and I want you to get the same date for me. <laughs> the same date? Yep. She was a real swinger. <laughs> I'll do my best, sir. Yeah, well, thanks again. Yeah. Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye. Yeah. Well, Mrs. Carmichael? Yes, sir? You make the swingin'est little old lady I can hardly wait! <laughs> 